Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, it's Dr. Alessandro. And in this video, I'd like to talk with you a little bit about what we call lesions. These are things that aren't quite normal that we find in the soft tissues or maybe even the bone of your mouth, depending. Although technically you could say that even a cavity is a lesion. Um, but anyway, abnormalities found in the mouth, typically in the soft tissue, sometimes in bone. Uh, that we are interested in, of course, finding out more about. Now, it is really, really important. If something is found that isn't quite normal in your mouth, uh, that you should at least con strongly consider, really, you should 100% have follow-up on it uh, and, and make sure it's okay. Now, what, for example, our practice does if I'm doing a checkup or, for example, I'm seeing an emergency patient and I see something that's abnormal, uh, maybe it's uh, in a check, case of a checkup, it's something on, say, the roof of the mouth or in an emergency, somebody has a toothache, but then somewhere else in the mouth, there's something that looks a little bit different. Of course, I'll let the patient know, hey, I see something that's a little bit out of the ordinary then what I'll do is I'll always let the patient know and let the hygienist know, you know we'd like to see you in about two weeks, roughly. So my follow-up time period is two weeks, and I imagine that that's the case for many practices around the country, where we invite the patient to come back for a quick 10-minute check to see if there's been a change in the soft tissue or in the you know, suspect area, no matter where it is. Uh, and if we see a change, um, or you know, if we see that things have reverted back to normal, then we just let the patient know, hey, everything's okay. It may have been, say, a potato chip that scratched an area inside the mouth, or uh, hot coffee, or hot vegetable, hot cheese burn. Um, you know, it may have been any of those things that are perfectly normal, but you know, show up as an abnormal spot uh, because of the tissue damage. Uh, so, you know, if everything's okay, we let the patient go and you know, there's no charge for that visit and they're on their way. Uh, but, you know, if we still see that there's an abnormal area in the tissue, uh, then we as a practice, you know, as a, myself as a dentist, and I'm sure many others, um, will make a referral uh, to an oral surgeon or somebody that can perform a biopsy. Now, some general dentists will do it on their own. So there are a whole bunch of different types of biopsies, and it depends on really the size of what's abnormal. Uh, some practices, some oral surgeons or general practitioners will do a brush biopsy. That is, they take a little brush and they kind of scrape it along the abnormal area, and then they pack that up and send that to a laboratory. Uh, alternatively, there can be something called an incisional biopsy, which is when a piece of the abnormal area is taken, usually with a scalpel, uh, is kind of cut out of the area, a small piece, and then sent to a laboratory. Um, or there can be an excisional biopsy where the entire abnormal area is removed. And usually that's small, only if the cases are small. Uh, we're not going to do a large excisional biopsy. So in small abnormal areas, an excisional biopsy is done. In larger ones, where it might be kind of really damaging to do, you know, an excisional one, an incisional one is done just to limit the amount of tissue that's taken you know, for evaluation. And so, you know, after that, uh, you know, that's all sent to a laboratory and the laboratory will return results. Now here, as I speak, you know, I'm going to start talking with you about cases that I've seen and showing pictures. You know, the first one is you know a younger patient who showed up with an abnormal area of the palate. That is, uh, it, even though it's not terribly well pictured, uh, the area of the palate that you're seeing now uh, in this photograph actually is basically an erosion. So it's basically tissue that's gone and there's solid bone sitting there exposed to the mouth. And the patient could not remember or recall any specific trauma, which trauma can cause that, uh, but this, but did know that this area was there. She felt the change, uh, even though it wasn't painful, which is very surprising. Uh, exposed bone is, is typically very, very painful and not pleasant. Uh, but she couldn't remember any trauma. And, uh, you know, the area was not tiny and uh, it was kind of surprising. You know, usually somebody remembers something. So 
I, I had the patient go follow up with an oral surgeon and the, the patient did, which is good. Uh, fortunately, it was determined to be that it possibly was some sort of trauma, though the patient couldn't remember. And eventually the palate healed over. So a year later, uh, all the tissue was back to normal in that area. Now in this second case, uh, this is actually a picture from another video that I have, one on smokeless tobacco. The patient had come in uh, for discomfort on the upper left uh, on a tooth that you know, had gum disease around it, uh, but had this area you know, front and center on the lower. Uh, and you know, this patient's a mid-40s male, uh, so not exactly an older type, uh, and uh, said, oh yeah, doc, what about this? And, you know, pulled his lip down uh, after I evaluated his upper left chief complaint area. And uh, this, is the, this is what I saw, uh, the, the lesion that I did see. And I asked the fellow how, how long it had been there. And, and this patient said, well, it's been there for a while. Uh, he could only give me that it had been there for a number of months. Uh, he couldn't give me any further information beyond that. Uh, so, you know, again, I, I referred him to an oral surgeon for quick evaluation, uh, really immediate evaluation uh, of that area because I thought it was important because it, he was a smokeless tobacco user. Uh, so there is a higher, you know, higher risk in those cases. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I have not heard anything back from the patient or from an oral surgeon or anything. And, and the patient was not one of our patients and it was also during pandemic. So uh, this patient has kind of vanished and uh, who knows what's going on. Um, I will attempt to follow up. I believe I did call at one point a few months after, but I did not receive a call back from that patient. Now, uh, the last case that I'm gonna show you is an odd case where Again, this is something that the patient was originally unaware of, uh, and it was, it's basically a hole in the tissue above uh, the gum in the vestibular area of um, the upper right for this patient. And uh, I have no idea what it is. Uh, I can only say that it doesn't hurt the patient. The patient you know, is now aware. Uh, we found it on a checkup. One year later, after already having referred the patient to an oral surgeon for evaluation, uh, the patient has not gone to see an oral surgeon. We have reiterated the referral to an oral surgeon for evaluation. Uh, the patient has not gone and is unlikely to go despite the fact that I can kind of draw mucus or an unknown substance, kind of pull it out from this hole. Uh, I can't tell you where this hole leads. I can just tell you that it's there. Uh, and I would like it, of course, evaluated and treated by an oral surgeon, but uh, only if this patient will end up doing so. Uh, the patient uh, doesn't want any other dental work done, has a number of broken down teeth. He feels that uh, dentistry costs too much. So you have to ask yourself though, um, if you're in a situation like that, does your life cost too much? Because that could sometimes be the case. Um, you know, we want to take good care of you people. Uh, that's really important to us. And we want to make sure you all stay very healthy. And uh, letting something go like this, to me, is, of course, enormous risk. Uh, you risk possibly losing a part of your jaw if this ends up being something that is uh, more malignant. Uh, you end up losing teeth, jaw, bone, skin, tissue, uh, and possibly having you know big reconstructions, uh, even from the maxillofacial prosthodontist like a Dr. Andrew Smith, uh, or any other maxillofacial prosthodontist. So I mean, it, it can really lead to a lot of complications, and if not treated in a timely manner, it can lead to death. Uh, so uh, I understand that you know finding something abnormal can be a little bit nerve-wracking. It can be scary. I agree, it can be very scary. I had uh, actually something in my own mouth. Um, you know, I had an assistant take a look in my mouth and I told her, hey, is there an aphthous ulcer? Uh, you know, one of those things that you saw in one of my previous videos, is there an aphthous ulcer uh, up here? And she's like, well, yeah, but what's that? And um, you know, I said, what do you mean, what's that? She said, yeah, I know where the aphthous ulcer is. She was looking at it, she knew what an aphthous ulcer was, but she looked at me and said, what's that? 
So I grabbed the mirror and I looked in. Sure enough, there was something that was different there. Uh, I went to a buddy of mine who's an oral surgeon, great guy in Pottstown named Dr. John Lignelli, and uh, he removed it for me and uh, it was turned out to be a fibroma. Uh, but there was something there and it was a little bit nerve wracking. Uh, so uh, that said, it can be scary, uh, but I would not forego the follow up with an oral surgeon. I would go and have it evaluated, whether it be a question of fear, whether it be a question of cost, no matter what the case, Please do it. Your my life may depend on it. Uh, you know, maybe even your bone and tissues on the less important level. Uh, I mean, you can you know have some of that removed and, and replaced. Uh, it, it's not easy, but it can be done. But you can never replace your life. So that said, uh, I thank you all for keeping on watching my videos and uh, staying tuned with this channel. And I hope you're all staying well and healthy.